I'd like to welcome in my guest, Alex Terrell, to the show. Very excited to talk about a lot of things. Alex, how's it going? It's been going good, man. Just, you know, busy. Like I told you, it's it's been a little bit hectic here as of late, but uh, finally glad things are coming down. Sure. And there's a lot of things that obviously I want to get to, but I, I was just curious how your summer's been. Um, you guys finish up the season, you know, stuff with draft and, and everything else. What's it been like? And also, you know, most ball players are playing summer ball and obviously it's been a little bit different situation, but just what, what has your summer been like for you? Uh, I've been training the whole time. I really never stopped. I was, I was working my tail off uh, in case my name got called in the draft. So I was ready to go. Uh, when that moment uh, came, but it, it never came. So I just continued to do what I did before the draft. I've just been working out every day, hitting every day. Uh, I've been throwing every day, keep my arm in shape and trying to be in the best possible shape I can for when I show up on campus at Florida State. And, and your work ethic, that, that's one of the questions I want to talk to you about. And you talked about it during the season that you often would go to the field and, and hit balls on your own and, and do those kind of things. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more where that comes from? And then also, what is your routine with that? Um, again, I know you explained it just a little bit. If you could elaborate a little bit more on, on what that's like for you. Um, yeah, it's just my work ethic is, is something that's always driven me. Uh, since I'm a little kid, I feel like uh, I could outwork anybody who's on the field with me or even somebody who's not on the field with me across the country. I don't want anybody to say that they outwork me. It's something that I take a lot of pride in. Um, and I think it, it helps the team as well, wherever I'm at, if they see me working my tail off and somebody might join me and I could, you know, kind of impact somebody else. Um, but right now, basically, my routine is I usually wake up in the morning, I go for like a jog or a run, whatever it is that day, um, depending on if I'm doing, you know, long distance cardio or sprint work. And then I'll do a, a, a lift, a lift in my, in my garage. I got a squat rack, I got a full gym set in there. So I'll, I'll get that uh, the lift in, and then I'll wait around a little bit, get some lunch, and I'll go hit um, at my high school coach's house. He's got a cage in his backyard. Or I'll go hit on the field with a couple of my buddies at their uh, college and then just wait for my brother to have free time so I can play some catch with him, been on a throwing program with him. So it's helping him out and it's helping me out as well. So. And, and then during the season, you're hitting stuff that you would do extra, um, you know, I remember there was a time you talked about you really concentrate on hitting balls the other way or just hitting balls on, on your own. Um, what were some of those sessions like and, and late at night or when were those? And, and then also those by yourself? Um, yeah, of course. A, a couple of times I, I would stay by myself after after games or long weekend series where we uh, came on the, the short end of the stick. So I would kind of stay out there and on a Sunday or something and hit few hours by myself off the tee and then we have the self-feeding machine so I would hit off those um and then there was a few nights where uh, I was struggling a little bit towards this part of the season so was Villar um and I, I remember one night specifically we both stayed hitting till about like five in the morning so um we, we were there all night and and you know kind of just hitting getting ready for a weekend series and it kind of paid off because I think that was right before we went to UNC if, I, if I'm correct so uh we both kind of hit the ball pretty well there. Alex, so just what, what was this season like for you guys? Uh, you personally, can can you kind of take me through it? And um, a, a lot going into the year, obviously, and, and just the way it worked and um, a little bit ups and downs. I, I was just, how, how did you kind of process this season? And, and what was it like kind of going through it? Uh, I mean, now that it's all said and done, it's kind of how you just said it. It was, it was kind of a roller coaster. We would go really, really good at times, and then we'd be pretty down in the dumps for a little bit. Um, and it seemed like the team's emotions rolled with how we were playing. So um, there, when we were going really good, things were going great. And everybody was having a great time. But when things went bad, it seemed like everybody was was down in the dumps, like like I said. And it was it was tough. I mean, it, I, I, you know, as a leader, I tried to get everybody to stay up. But it, it was it was a tough, uh, tough year for a lot of guys. And um, it didn't help that we had so many restrictions with the COVID. It was hard to, you know. One year on the road, we, we weren't allowed to leave the hotel, so it was kind of tough to get your mind off of, um, you know, the bad game that your team just had or you had individually. So um, just things like that. And, and obviously, the way the season's going during the year, you're obviously looking for answers, ways to correct things as yourself, to team, every everybody. And one of the things that stood out to me was you touched on, I mean, just guys had plenty of expectations. You touched on guys like Villar, and yourself like working hard. I know everybody was working hard. And everybody wanted um, to have one of those great years. Um, so many veterans returning. 
is there something you can now that it's over and maybe reflect back on it? Is there something maybe you could pinpoint that that just wasn't quite working the way you guys had hoped? Uh, there's nothing that and specifically that I think caused the bad seasons for a lot of guys. I just think that uh, we dealt with a lot of adversity and um, some guys did did well through it. Other guys kind of hit some bumps in the road. And like like I said, it was a lot of ups and downs. A lot of us would go really good for a little bit, you know, five, six, seven game span. And then we'd kind of be a little down for a few games and kind of, you know, showed we were a little bit inconsistent when it came to things like that. But uh, there's, there's nothing really that I could tell you that this was the reason why we didn't have a good season. And, and then you personally, Alex, uh, you know, the numbers are what they are, but also, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you'd probably wish they were a little bit better, but one of the things I was looking at and kind of thought about throughout the season, like you were getting on base, you're, you're taking your walks there, I was just looking, your, your on-base percent was just a tick lower than it was in 2019. Um, so it, I was just, how did you kind of make out this season for you? And you touched on ups and downs, obviously, with what you did that Clemson uh, with that home run and, and things like that. And you had your positive series as well. How did you kind of, kind of looking back, your, your thoughts on your season here? Uh, I'm, de I'm definitely upset in, in my performance. I thought that uh, I definitely should have done a lot better. Um, offensively and, and defensively, obviously, um, uh, getting taken out late in games for substitutes and stuff like that. Maybe I could have worked a little bit harder on defense, but uh, like I said, my work ethic is there. So I, I don't know what the reasons were behind all these things that happened. Like, I think that um, offensively, it's just I started off really, really slow, and then I got going pretty well, and then adversity hit the wall again, and it took me a little bit to get out of it. Um, but it, it was just a roller coaster of a season, like I said. And one of the things that stood out to me is what one of the things Gino has said, and I think other players had said too. Just you're a guy, and I, you know, you're hard on yourself when things aren't going well. Um, what was that like? And were there some tough times for you personally? And then also you touched on, you know, coming out of games late that couldn't have been easy. Um, per personally, I, I was looking at sometimes you're down in the order, and I know you've hit down the order before, but for me, I'm looking at it like that can't always be easy. Just how did you kind of process? those kind of things that you were going through? Um, well, it, it was obviously uh, one of the toughest things I had to deal with was probably getting taken out late in games. So it didn't sit with me right uh, mentally. Uh, it, was, it was tough to kind of process because I thought that I had taken a lot of pride in my defense over the last couple of years and, and worked my tail off to become a better defender, which I think I have. Um, so that was tough. It was just kind of something that, that I had to deal with, something that, you know, it's the coach's decision ultimately, and I, I'm the player, so I got to do what the coach says. And um, just just offensively, you know, I would, I would go good, and then adversity would hit. I mean, in, in different ways, uh, my grandmother passed away in the middle of the season this year uh, when I was going really, really well, actually. I, I just got her started getting really hot. Um, I think I got my batting average up 300, and things were going really well, and she passed away. Uh, it was a tough couple weeks um, there in the middle, um, but – just like I said, it was just a lot to deal with mentally. And um, I, I think now that the season's over, I could look back at it. There's things I could have done a little bit better, maybe handle myself a little bit better in some situations. But ultimately, I, I thought I did a pretty good job. And I thought I stayed, you know, in, a, in an upbeat for my guys and, and kind of cheered everybody on and, and was able to kind of be a voice for that team and, and for the younger guys that really needed, you know, a point in the right direction. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your loss, man. I know that's difficult and just an ongoing process and hopefully you're hanging in there uh like i said it's difficult um it, it, no no real way to transition alex but just you, you touched on it. things have been hectic for you over the summer i'm curious about your decision making process what has th that been like ultimately coming to the to the decision to go to florida state but just what, can you explain maybe the decision process and and maybe when you thought that would be a, a possibility that you would leave and then uh, pick up a shoe. Um, well, I had a conversation with Gino, obviously, before the draft uh, regarding, you know, being me being able to come back to, to the University of Miami if, if the opportunity was there and things like that. And he said, you get back to me. Obviously, they don't expect me to be there for five years. Um, so I, I understand the, their side of the, you know, the picture, too. I understand they got scholarship money. They got to free up for people and things like that. And um, shortly after the draft, we had the conversation. Um, the opportunity wasn't there, so I had to en enter the portal, and you know I kind of completely understood it was was something that that needs to be done from a business standpoint. And of course, I thought that you know my time at Miami 
was great. I thought that I had, you know, grown a lot over the four years that I had been there. I had learned so much about the game of baseball, about life and um, so many things. So I, c- I couldn't thank, you know, the university and, and my teammates, the fans, everybody enough. It was just an overall great experience to be there um, through those four years and, and live out a dream of mine uh, playing there, you know. Um, but uh, when I entered the portal, it was just hectic. A lot of people kind of, you know, calling me right away and and emailing me and just kind of trying to get to know me and see if I was the right fit for their school. Um, narrowed it down to about five schools and got to three. And then obviously it was ultimately um, FSU that I chose. I thought it was just the best uh, decision for myself personally. And obviously I thought that Florida State would give me the, the best opportunity to one play every day and, and go out there and, and be a, you know, a veteran presence in a team that doesn't really know me. But I feel like I could help some of the younger guys and be a leader in that clubhouse and obviously, you know, help that team hopefully win a first national title and, and do something really special over there. Uh, Alex, you touched on just a little bit there that you weren't maybe necessarily surprised, but were you a little bit just uh, like you said, the opportunity wasn't there. Were, were you kind of surprised of how everything played out or was it kind of, or how did you kind of interpret or, or kind of uh, process that, that, um, obviously, you know, my, you, you saw my last interview as a hurricane, you know, how I feel about the program and how I feel about the school. It's my home. I grew up down here. So, um, obviously it stung a little bit, but I, I understood, I, I completely understood things had to be done. And, um, a lot of guys were in the same position as me. So it's not like I was just singled out on my own. It was a, a lot of my teammates and a lot of other guys around the country are dealing with the same thing that I am. And, um, it's just another bump in the road, but at the end of the day, it just adds a little bit more to your story and something that, you know, you can learn from and, you know, you never know. I could help somebody else later in life or, you know, my kid or whoever it may be uh, who's going through similar things. I, I think that this is all part of the plan. And um, I, I did understand. I understood, I understood completely um, where they were coming from and their side of their decision. And it's, it's okay. At the end of the day, I had to move on and do what was best for me. And you touched on, players around the country dealing with this, you know, transfers and obviously Florida State's getting some transfers. Jordan Carrion from Florida is one of the guys like yourself that, that'll be going there. Uh, what was it about FSU that ultimately um, made it a good fit for you? Uh, just just the fact that they have a hitter's ballpark, definitely. And and I had a lot of conversations with the head coach, Mike Martin Jr. And he, fit, he made me feel really comfortable when I was talking to him. And um, it seemed like he was – the type of coach that I would like to play for, just uh, hard nose, really wants to win, um, has a lot of passion for where he's at, and uh, things like that really, really, you know, kind of open your eyes to where you're going. And um, ultimately, I'm a competitor, and I want to win, and I want to win big. So um, it seemed like he was on the same page when it came to things like that. And obviously, they've had players in success, and they had a lot of guys get drafted this past year. And um, they, they're always competitive every year. Even if they don't have a good team, they somehow find a way to make a deep run in the playoffs and, and have a good season. So it, it definitely is, is attractive. You touched on the, the field there, that 315-foot line down the right field line. I'm, I'm sure you'll be excited about that. Not that you can't hit it out at other places, but that's got to be exciting. Alex, what, what's what's the reaction been like? Um, obviously, the rivalry, but, you know, from Miami to Florida, so what's it been like? Um, and maybe some comment, maybe heard from your teammates and also um, your future teammates. What's kind of the reaction been since your uh, announcement? It's a lot of good and a lot of bad at the same time. A lot of people are, are you know, extremely supportive. It shows that uh, to me, a lot of former teammates, guys that I played with last year, even guys that I played with my freshman year reaching out, even some guys that I didn't play with, um, fans in general that I, that I got to meet briefly while I was at Miami. Uh, reaching out and being extremely supportive, which, you know, to me kind of shows that I made an impact when I was at the U and that was something that, that I wanted to do while I was there. I wanted to kind of be able to, whenever my time would be to leave, that I'd be able to say, hey, I impacted a lot of lives and I feel like I did just by the support that I'm getting from those guys and I couldn't thank them enough for, for all the messages and uh, calls I've been getting over the last couple of weeks. But um, ex- same thing with, you know, my new teammates at Florida State, a lot of them have reached out and um, have said, hey, welcome to the family, and, and we're excited to get to know you and get to work. And uh, obviously that's comforting because I want to get there and I want to, you know, be part of that group and, and be, you know, one of the main parts of that family. So hopefully uh, when I get there, I'm um, welcome. And I understand some people might be a little bit upset at my decision, but uh, it was what was best personally for me. So um, I hope they understand that. Uh, Alex, just, what's your timeline like um, for getting up there and um, 
you know, those kind of things. And also maybe what you'll be planning on doing um, up until then and, and kind of leading into fall ball or even fall ball, maybe some things that you'll be focusing on um, with, with your game there. Um, well, I'm just going to continue to work out on the same routine that I've been on until I have to show up there. I'm, I'm leaving up there um, the weekend before school starts, uh, moving into my place up there. But, uh, you know, just things that I'm, I'm extremely focused on this year is, is getting into a little bit of better shape going into the season. Uh, definitely, you know, to be more consistent with my approach hitting and, and things like that. And I feel like the, the little time I've been doing this summer has really helped me kind of sharpen things that I was a little bit off on this year and things that um, kind of made me not have the best season that I could have had. And, and obviously my defensive uh, agility and quickness that I need to, to show to prove to a lot of people that I'm an everyday first baseman at any level. And with that, just with, with the draft, Alex, you, you know, highly regarded coming out of high school back in 2017. Um, you've had attention on you. You've had scouts watch you. Um, I, I'm just curious what, what the draft process has been like for you. You know, last year you were draft eligible, shortened round, goes to five rounds. Um, this year shortened again. But just w what has it been like for you? And then particularly with this season, this year, um, how how'd you kind of take that? Um, yeah, well, out, out of high school, I turned turned down a good deal of money to go to Miami, and uh, I turned down a you know opportunity again in the 2020 shortened season. A few calls that I was getting, um, so it kind of shows how I felt about Miami that I really wanted to go there and I really wanted to win, uh, and how I felt about the program and things like that. But uh, this year, obviously, I, I kind of stabbed myself in the back with just ha not having the season that I needed to have, and uh, you know the cards just didn't really play out. I didn't really get too many calls and few teams showing interest, but nothing really kind of worked out the way I wanted it to. And it led me to where I'm at now. And I truly believe that this was kind of all part of the plan in some way, shape or form. This is where I needed to be at this point in my life. And I, I know we've talked so much about this past year and how you wish things would, would have went a little bit different. I want, want you, curious if you could take me back to 2019. Um, you had that big breakout year after your freshman year, lead the ACC in home runs. One of the things that stood out to me with your home run numbers um, was just you didn't have very many gaps where you weren't hitting one. Um, it seemed very consistent throughout the year. Um, what, what was that season like for you? And you had, you know, touched on your teammates. You guys um, make a rise there, go back to the NCAA tournament. Kind of looking back a couple of years, that was a full season there. Just what was that like? And then obviously you get really close to the UM single season home run record. When did that start to come into play that maybe you could do that? And just curious what, what that season was like for you going through that. Um, yeah, I started off extremely hot to start the year, and I was really comfortable in, in scrimmages moving forward towards uh, towards the season. I felt like uh, I had set a good routine with, with Coach Lopes, and uh, we kind of knew what I needed to do to attack the season and, and get off on the right foot. And uh, obviously I hit a little bump in the road in the middle there. My average shot down a little bit, but I was still hitting home runs. I was still playing for power. Um, which allowed me to stay in the lineup every day. And um, I just felt like I was just really comfortable with that group of guys that uh, a lot of camaraderie on that team, a lot of people that uh, were all pulling for each other. It wasn't like, hey, I, I want this guy to play bad so I could jump in the lineup. It was kind of like, hey, we want to win as many games as possible. We, we think that we have a chance at Omaha and uh, we want to be that team to get us back on the map. So um, I think everybody was just kind of pushing for each other in the right direction. And it, and it helped when, you know, you're playing every day and you got the guys on the bench that, uh, necessarily aren't playing every day rooting for you every time that you get up there um but it's just like I said developing a good routine that kind of worked for me really well that year and uh, moving forward with it and it, I stuck with it the whole year and it, it paid off and just do, do, I was curious if you watch any if, if you're a guy that watches a lot of baseball um do you watch major leagues is there teams or players you like watching uh, I watch baseball every now and then I uh more highlights than games but uh i I don't really watch any particular players. I'm just a fan of the game and a fan of, you know, all the the new things that are happening in the game. And obviously, you know, the younger players coming up with a lot of uh, energy and excitement. It's how I like to play. So um, obviously just like watching things like that. And just lastly, before I get you out of here, have you thought about what it's going to be like um, going against UM um, next season? What, what, what that first game or, or the series, what, what that's going to be like for you personally? Uh, it's going to feel weird. It, it really will. But I, I do have a ton of motivation moving forward against uh, UM. And 
I think that uh, I've, I've had plenty of conversations with my former teammates at UM and um, they're like, I can't believe you're going to be on the other side, but uh, you know, they're wishing me the best obviously. And um, I'm just, I'm just excited to get out there and play against them. I know they're going to be a really good team next year. They're going to have competitive pitching staff. So I'm looking forward to, to hitting off all these guys. I mean, luckily enough, I've, I've faced them enough in inner squads where I have experience against most of the guys coming back and um I feel I feel pretty comfortable moving into that season. That's great, man. Like I said from the beginning, I'm I'm glad you took the time here. Um, a lot to talk about. It. It's great hearing your story and, and explain certain things. And um, obviously, best of luck and, and hopefully things go well for you personally, man. And uh, look forward to watching you continue playing. I appreciate you. Thank you for everything. You know, during my time in Miami, and obviously getting to know you, I, I appreciate you. Thank you.